Good morning. Um, so yesterday's video, again, is going to be uploaded a little bit late. Um, so I, I don't even think at this point that video is uploaded yet, but it will be up. Day nine will be up very, very shortly. And speaking of day nine, there were some slight errors with regards to what we were doing or what we were trying to do on this series. So first of all, no flesh and blood was played. Um, we, I did have my mates planned to come round on uh, on on Tuesday night to play some Marvel Legendary, which is the game that I got out ready to play that night. Um, but we didn't up, we didn't end up playing that. My mate brought round some Lorcana decks, um, and I was like, okay, all right. You know, my other mate is you know, both of my mates are, are into Disney. I'm into Disney to a certain degree. I know all the older stuff, like you know, my favourite. If I was to build a Lorcana deck, it would probably be Aladdin, um, because that's my favourite. Um, so we just played a multiplayer game of Lorcana, and then we was going to plan to move on to the board game after that. However, Lorcana is pretty good. It's alright. I can't imagine playing it at an LGS or with people I don't know. Um... And I definitely couldn't play it in a competitive setting. But the multiplayer aspect of it is actually pretty good. Um, and obviously the card pool was still quite small at the moment. But the multiplayer aspect is still pretty feasible. There's still a lot of politics and still a lot of um, working together with other members of the table to make sure that the other player can't reach their law or then calculating if... You know, the, 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 the differentials when it gets to the end, the end game whether you can actually interact with that player in order to try and get your lore up to win. Um, so it's an interesting an interesting back and forth, even in multiplayer. I haven't played it 1v1. I imagine it's okay, 1v1. Um, the the consensus I've, I've sort of made at the moment is it's quite grindy early on, but then obviously when you get towards sort of 10 lore, upwards that's when the race starts and obviously when you start when you start having five ink on board and you can drop your big ones that's when you have to start interacting with things um but all in all i thought it was a pretty good experience i will probably um it'll probably be played a fair bit self-contained within my friend group um and the, the other great thing about it as well is that uh, it actually it actually got my other mate playing card games when he wouldn't normally play card games and he really enjoyed it nick his name is uh, you might have seen him on for, for old 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 people that have followed what i do i used to run an old an old channel called past the term which is now rebranded into something else but i'm not even using it um and we did pokemon content on that channel and nick really really liked pokemon um, so he, he really really liked Lorcana as well. So there could be, there could potentially be with my group of friends that come round, there could possibly be room for some gameplay content on Go Again Gaming for Lorcana. That being said, at the moment the schedule for Go Again Gaming is absolutely rammed, and trying to get a video out every single day as a part of this challenge is proving to be hard when I've got things going on in life in the background, hence why they're slightly delayed now. Um, but nevertheless, we are, we are going to carry on. I just thought I, I would give my sort of two pence on Lorcana. I thought it was quite fun. And albeit I did sort of slate it in the Discord and I was posting pictures in there and saying, oh yeah, well look who plays Discord, look who plays Lorcana. It's all fucking 30 plus year olds that are playing it. And something doesn't sit right with me about that. And I still wouldn't play it at an LGS, I still wouldn't go to an event and play it, I still wouldn't want to play it with people I don't know, but busting it out on a kitchen table and the format, the multiplayer format is actually a decent one and one that you still find purchase in, I think it's a great game to play socially with friends and especially if you do have connections with Disney or whether, if your friends have connection with Disney, I mean whenever a song came out we were, we were singing it, you know, there's there's a bit of... Bit of um, <laughs> A bit of footage on the last video about uh, with us singing a stupid song. I'm not even sure if that song was in the was in one of the decks, but that's the one we just started singing. Um, 
but yeah very very cool self-contained experience you may see content on it on the channel probably not highly competitive stuff i just don't think lorcana is supposed to be that it's supposed to be a gateway game to people that are playing tcgs it's very it's very simple right now and uh, i think it's it'll, i think it'll be good to stay that way and just introduce more characters and more um more mechanics as time goes on but yeah, just thought I'd give my uh, my sort of two pence on that because obviously that's what the the, the next video uh, that I'm uploading right now is eating slash playing Lorcana every day until Worlds. Forgive me, day nine. Um, but uh, but yeah, there might be there might be some of these uh, on this series that that might not necessarily be Talishar games or Flesh and Blood games, right? There may be some videos that. We skip on the flesh and blood game and then play something else, or we don't play a game whatsoever because we've got a load of vlog content. I imagine that's probably what's going to happen in Switzerland. Um, but nevertheless, we are still cracking on with the mission of uploading a video every single day until Worlds. It just might not be um, the format I thought it was going to be. But hey ho, we uh, we continue. Yesterday also was a little bit of a slip up. My mates came round. We ordered a takeaway. They wanted dirty kebabs, and obviously I hadn't eaten yet, so I agreed to having a kebab. Um, so I didn't have I didn't have anything else though. Um, the only the only food I had yesterday was obviously the eggs and the pork in the morning, and then the kebab later on. The kebab was just chicken shish kebab, um, so it's still meat. It's just probably covered in oil. Um, so. It's a slight slip up, but still trying to maintain the same thing, the same eating meat uh, every day. Um, it would have been a lot different if I wasn't on the diet, right? I would have had the kebab and the pita bread and the sauce and the, and the chilies and the soft fizzy drink to go with it. But literally, I just had chicken sheesh and I still drank water. I didn't get any soft drinks from the, from the kebab place or anything, which is not... I think soft drinks is the thing that I suffer with the most. Soft, soft drinks are the things that were the thick, were, were, were responsible for weight gain and bad health, I believe, uh, because of all the sugar, all the invisible calories, essentially. Um, but um, I digress. Yesterday was a little bit of a slip up, but we're going to get back on it today. We do have uh, pork steaks for breakfast. Surprise, surprise. Um, so we've got, we got three of those. They're a little bit burnt, but um, they will do. And then we are going to get out some food for later, which my girlfriend's already done. She's already got meatballs out for herself. Um, but fuck knows what I'm going to have. Pork steaks, probably. Um, do you know what? Yeah. Let's get some more pork steaks out, baby. Um, we'll have pork steaks with eggs tonight. We've still got a lot of eggs that we need to use. Um, so we'll have those. We'll put those in there. Um, and we may walk to the shop at lunch today uh, because this is all we've got for now. So we might pick up some hard boiled eggs from the shop. Um, and then what we're also doing today is Wednesday today. So we're also gonna be playing football today. Um, so I guess having the kebab will sort of be alleviated a little bit by the football that I'm playing tonight. Plus the walk back from football as well, which is always a bit of a slog. So. I think it's just about I think I think all of these things and what I've learned so far in the in the first 9 days of doing this is just making better choices and when you do have a little bit of a treat albeit it was still meat just make sure you don't have all the crap that surrounds that right like fizzy drinks and desserts and don't slip off the wagon, don't spike your insulin, because as soon as you do, as soon as you have those carbs, as soon as you have those sugar, all those carbs, you are gonna start craving the crap. So luckily I didn't have the pita bread, luckily I didn't have the sauce, luckily I didn't have the fizzy drink on the side, because God knows what sort of path that would have led down. Um, so I'm still happy with the small success that I took in that, and, uh, and yeah, I think everybody else should be the same as well. If you have an off day, if there's like, ah, oh, okay, like in Switzerland, for instance. In Switzerland, if there's nowhere that does, well, there's gonna be loads of places that do meat, but if we go out, for instance, if we go out for a drink, having a, having a drink will be okay as long as I make up for it in some other form. Um, I'm not gonna be doing that too often, but I'm just saying that if we get into those experiences 
and we want to we want to experience that while we're there or whatever. We need to make up for it in some other way and just not take the piss, basically. Um, but yeah, today is another normal day, getting straight back on it again, and hopefully we'll play some flesh and blood in a bit. Uh, but uh, I am getting a lift to work today because I've got football later, and I get a lift from work to football. Um, with one of the guys that plays football in the office and then I walk back home from there so I'm not cycling today um, you might see some football footage I tried getting some last time but it just wasn't in a great place or a great angle to really see what was going on um, so hopefully we can change that today which reminds me to take a, I need to take a tripod to work today to try and to try and see if we can get it elevated a bit of an elevated angle for, for some football footage but anyway uh, we're going to go off to work now, we're going to eat some pork steaks and uh, thank you very much to everybody who's tuning into these videos regardless of whether they're Lorcana or Flesh and Blood but going to be Flesh and Blood tonight for sure um, please make sure you check out the uh, the raffle is still going on so if you haven't contributed and you want to get in there, do that um, but um, thanks to everyone who likes the video, subscribes, does all the bell notifications wants to be notified and actually wants to see these videos and finds these videos of use, thank you very much and, uh, and thanks for all the patrons. Thank you to the new patron, uh, Zephurius. Thank you very much for joining the Patreon. And uh, yeah, there's gonna be lots of rewards for patrons coming up soon, but I'm, I'm just very busy at the moment, so uh, bear with me on that. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, ca let's carry on with the day, baby. Time to go to work. Fun times. Fun times, indeed. Today's video as well, you'll probably see the following day because um, by the time I get back off, you know, by the time I get back from football, it's going to be like eight o'clock. And then I have to play the Talashar game, edit the video, and then release it. So you're probably going to see it later on again. But then the following day, Thursday, you should see in real time, you should see Thursday's video on Thursday night. Um, so you're probably you're basically getting about two videos a day at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we'll catch up eventually. And Switzerland again, well, might be a little bit delayed, but we'll see. Here, anyway, here's my lift. Just finished football for the Wednesday night. It was a lot. Uh, <clears throat> it was a lot better this time round because there was no there was no sun blaring down. Uh, it was a lot cooler. Um, so yeah, definitely coped with it a lot better this week. Not sure whether that's because of the diet or what, but definitely felt a lot more energised. I think it's just because it's cooler. But just heading back now. I've got, what have I got for dinner tonight? I have got, what have I got? I got, I got pork steaks out again, didn't I? Of course I fucking did. But yeah, just heading home now. Need to pick up some reading glasses from, uh, from the shop because my other reading glasses broke. So I need to pick up a new pair of reading glasses. But as you can tell today is just not that interesting, really. Just really, really looking forward to the weekend where I'm going to be flying to Zurich, Switzerland, baby. Thanks to everybody who's uh, who's pledged on the uh, fundraiser for that. But yeah, just going to walk home now, get back, have some food, and then play a game of Talishar, I think. So we'll see you on the other side. I would also urge people to go and check out the latest episode of the Living Legends podcast, which airs today. Uh, that's over on Red Zone Rogues channel or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Living Legends podcast is out today, and that is the episode with me and Bill carrying the flag for when Kel was at Nats. So, great conversation. Um, just go and check it out. That's it, really. Which ones do I need? That's the question. 
Just grabbed some cheese and chorizo for that. Because I'm fucking Hank Marvin right now. I don't know whether, whether I'm gonna have the pork steaks later, but I just really fancy some fucking cheese after football. So some people will argue that it's not really carnival, but I'm allowing myself to have it, so fuck it, you know? <clears throat> the nights, the nights are drawing in now in the UK. They are drawing in a lot quicker. Um, so in a few weeks time, I reckon we'll be walking back in the dark, most likely. Um, lovely evening though. Very nice. I also bonded with another human individual today. Um, so people that don't know, I work in sales, uh, in property sales, and uh, there's different teams on the same floor, but we don't really talk to the accounting team. And there was this new guy that started maybe three months ago. Um, obviously we're acquainted in the office and we obviously do pleasantries and all that sort of stuff, but he, uh, he started playing football with us this Wednesday and I didn't actually have a lift to football. So uh, I actually asked this guy from accounts if it, if it was okay to get a lift with him. Uh, and I realized, because he was in his football gear rather than his shirt, that he had a Bloodborne tattoo on his arm. And I was like, oh, is that a Bloodborne tattoo? And we just talked about gaming the whole fucking way there to football. Massive Souls fan is obviously playing the shit out of Baldur's Gate at the moment. Um, but yeah, nice little interaction today. Um, and obviously when I see him in the office now, there's gonna be a lot more there than just, how's it going? Blah de blah de blah. Now we've got fucking quest lines to talk about. NPCs to romance. Well, not NPCs, but you know, actual characters, Shadowheart. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd mention that as well. So that was a cool little thing that happened today. Football was pretty good today, actually. I've probably mentioned it already, actually, but yeah, much better, a lot cooler. Um, but yeah, just walking through this random ass field that I walked back through on the way back from football. Looks like something out of Gladiator, doesn't it? Looks like, looks like something out of Gladiator with the fucking things. But yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you back at home, I think. Okay, uh, so Talashar game for today. We are back playing Flesh and Blood every single day until Worlds. No more Lorcana today. <laughs> um, but um, to be fair, it was quite fun. It was quite a fun game. And obviously, we just played multiplayer. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Anyway, let's play a game. Uh, I'm just going to join this game, which is Viserai. So, let's just play this. Um, I don't think we need our Arcane Barrier 2. We'll just go in with the aggro. Uh, let's go. Good luck. Have fun, of course. And then we will play with the uh, Lace with Sleep Darts, Lace with Frailty, and Lace of Inertia. And two sigils. Let's do two sigils. Okay, good luck, have fun. We're going first. We only have a Remorseless, but we're going to use Death Dealer to pitch Rain Razors to put in the Remorseless, draw a card. Um, what do you want to do here? Do we just want to fire the Remorseless and then pass? I think we probably do, don't we? Yeah. Just fire the Remorseless and pass. Get it in the graveyard for Codex. I'll tell you what, these glasses are so much better than what I was using before. Just an extra little bit of magnification, and we are crystal clear with the images and the text in front of us. Hope everyone's doing well today. Thank you very much for everybody who's uh, liked and subscribed and all that good stuff. Um, this is uh, still a very much an ongoing series. Although, over the next few days, obviously when I'm travelling to Switzerland and what have you, the uploads may be a little bit more haphazard, because obviously um, I'm going to be away. And it just depends on Wi-Fi and depends on lots of other factors, right? So please be patient with the daily uploads there. Uh, they are blocking with two, which is fine. Um, 
and we will arsenal a Bolton shot, I think, just in case Warmongers comes around. Rosetta is still being played, uh, even though Briar is LL, which is interesting. But we'll just go with it. So our next turn, we can essentially do 6, 9, we can do 13, we can do 13 there, or we can do, uh, or we can do 10 plus 5, yes, yeah, so we can do 15 next turn with, with replacement, replacement of the arsenal. Oh. Okay. They just passed. They've made four rune chants and passed. All right, so let's have a look then. So flip that up. That can go to the bottom because we're not going to be able to play that. We're not going to be able to get that. I don't think. Let's get this to the bottom for now. Uh, and let's just do uh, premeditate and then a seek and destroy and then come in for 10 go again if it hits reload. And then we'll probably just follow up with an E strike for five. It's quite a lot of damage. 15 damage. They probably are going to be able to crack back quite hard though, aren't they, next turn? But still, we are the ones presenting damage first. So as long as we can get some damage through, we should be able to outrace. But they do, obviously, Rune Blades do have a big fridge. They got two, uh, one, and one. So actually, yeah, okay, not have to be careful of these breakpoints, obviously, with the uh, with the grasp and the spellbound creepers being on board. But we still have a premeditate here as well. So if the premeditate hits, we can actually just come in for seven with the e strike instead, because we're going to replace our arsenal with the premeditate. And if this hits, it obviously blows up their hand and arsenal as well. So they can't keep back any of those cards that they've essentially kept back there because of the fact that obviously they've just made four rune chance and passed their last turn so coming in with 10 go again they're still deciding what they want to do here by the looks of it but yeah very much looking forward to this weekend you're going to see some quality footage they're going to just going to take it all right uh we're not gonna we're not gonna do that we're not going to reload because we've already revealed from skullbone anyway and let's just do e strike for seven, because we got we now got a ponder anyway, so we may as well just do e strike for seven. Wow, they must have a ridiculous turn next turn then. If they're taking all of that damage, they've taken seventeen damage. That's pretty scary. So they are going to have to destroy their hand and arsenal on this turn, so they are going to have to make use of everything that they've got there. Morven Skies from Arsenal, which is a, the, th the three one. So on this turn, that's essentially going to simulate three damage as well. So we do have seven damage with Rune Chance this turn, so I guess that's okay. Uh, we'll just take all of this for now. That does have go again on hit with a three. Um... So we're still going to take another 5 from the rune chance. That's going to bring us down to 27. So we're still going to have 4 life extra. But obviously it just depends on what else goes on after this. We are still ahead in the race, per se. And they obviously we are maintaining card advantage currently. We do have a tunic trigger next turn. So this is going to be another go again, which is going to uh, produce rune chance. Um, so they are going to be able to ros rosetta us for quite a lot of damage. So yeah, this is a ridiculous turn. Uh, there's there's no there's no doubt the reason why they didn't block last turn. So they're going to be able to do quite a, a large amount of damage here. This is just big swing central this game. Um, and they do have a slight advantage over me with the fact that they do have armor, whereas I do not really. Um, how do I get rid of that bloody rune chance in the way? Uh, okay. And then four, so that puts us on life parity. And now they have uh, two and two after this. Two, two, and one. Well, two, two, and four. Because of Rosetta, even though they can't really use it anymore. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so we didn't take... The differential's a little bit high. But, hey-ho, let's see what we see what we get now. Rain raises on top. Um, so we can put that into our arsenal. What is that going to do, though? If we play it out, we can then do the Bolton shot thing. So I think that's probably okay. So if we leave that on top, uh, let's activate Azalea's ability, I think. Or do we do braces for plus one? Do we do braces for plus one? I think we probably do, don't we? Yeah. Let's just do it now. We might not have another chance. Um, so what do we want to do? Do we want to fire the infecting shot with, the, with go again? Or do you want to do the rain raises first and then just come in with a load of zero cost? Do we have a zero cost in our... Oh, we got remorseless in there. Okay, yeah, let's do this. So this is pretty big. Because um, we get to put the bolting shot in there with tunic. And we just have a load of zero costs, basically. Which is good. And we do have a red zero cost in our graveyard as well. So we could just go pure zero cost ham here. Pure zero cost ham. Oh wait, I've went to went went a bit too bit too far forward there. Whoops. Okay, right then. So let's load in this and draw. Oh wow, we got loads of Bolton shots, but we can't do all of we can't do all of them because they need to hit right. That's the problem. So let's just try this first seven. And we can get another bolt and shot back with the codex and then still threaten another bolt and shot after that with the drill shot reload, basically. Right? So we can play this, discard this, get back the bolt and shot, then fire that. If that hits, we put this into our arsenal and then fire that and then we yeah, and then we keep going, basically. So they need to block this turn, because this is this is gonna be quite big. But we still have a block, we still have a reload on the codex here, luckily, to be able to do even more stuff, but their life, their they're, they're ahead on life still. So, yeah, it's going to be a difficult one. But we still have rain raises on the stack, which is going to be pretty pivotal to how this turn turns out. It depends on whether they what, what what they do here, whether they block the reload. If they block the reload, it makes it a little bit more annoying because we have to discard the the yellow bolt and shot. So I've got, still got two coming through here. Cambo Slambo, the opponent. But yeah, still deciding what they want to do with the with the extra block here, potentially. Gold cap only blocks for one because they have higher life than me right now. Uh, so they will have to give up both the spellbound creepers and the the minus one uh, minus one counter on the skull cap to block this fully with equipment. Um, and I think I just I, th I think I just have to go for the I think I have to go for the um, oh, I could go for the e strike, but then that's not going to refill my arsenal, is it? That's the problem there. It's, that's not going to refill my arsenal. So I've activated Death Dealer already this turn. So yeah, it's um, not having the extra reload is a bit of a no bit of annoy bit annoying. But yeah, that's that fully blocked. That's fine. Then we're going to Codex. What are they going to choose? Okay, we'll get back the Bolton shot. Discard the yellow one. What are they going to get back? No, he, I, think, I think he needs to block this now. He needs to block all of this six now. Which he can do fairly easily, right? Which is the issue. Well, no, he just discarded a card, so I guess not. Uh, okay, so pass. Another Bolton shot for six. And then we can do drill shot for six as well, which is pretty good, and refill our arsenal. So pretty good turn of events there. Drill shot for six. Wow, 
Wow. Okay. Uh, let's put that on the... Uh, let's put that on the Spellbound Creepers. And we refill, refill our arsenal with a bolt and shot and pass. We all got a sigil as well. Uh, okay, fair enough. They're making a token. And they're swarming me for... That's fine. Yeah, I should have to push lethal now. Um, he's only got skull cap and uh, skull cap blocks for two, tunic blocks for one. So I just need to push three over the top, which I can do with, which is fine. I think we, I think we got this. Perhaps. Do we? No. Okay. Yeah, I think we have. I think we've got this. That bolt and shot turn was absolutely insane. Just came together quite nicely that hand there. That bolt and shot, that bolt and shot stack was absolutely insane. Really was. But yeah, we really, really don't care about this. We can also potentially even dominate for the win, perhaps. Depends on what we've got on top of the skull bone. So we need to get, uh, yeah. So we need to get five. So they're blocking. They can block for three from hand, and assumingly three from their ha uh, sorry, three on their armor and three from their hand. Uh, no, four from their armor and three from their hand. So that's seven. So we need twelve to get through, which I think we potentially have in two hits. Oh, come on, mate. We could even, depending on what's on top, we could even just snappies this turn and just fire the bolt and shot with snappies. And then... Use the sigil to load in sleep dart. Draw a card. Yeah, I need to figure this out now. Right, so... We could threaten lethal on the Bolton shot. We can also threaten the reload on the Bolton shot. But then we don't have to reload. Because we could do Lace with Frailty, Bolton shot, which is lethal. But also go again, also still having Death Dealer active. So I think that's probably the best thing to do. Force out the armor and then just crundle on in. But let's have a look, see what's on top first, and then go from there. Uh, so what have we got? What have we got? So they can block for four on field. And assumedly three from hand, which is seven. So if we find a dominated 12, well, we can win. Okay, it's not dominated, but still it is a buff, which might be better just to try and get over the top with the sleep dart. I think we just try and do that, don't we? Yeah, I think so. And then we see what we draw off of the death dealer. See what we draw off of the death dealer. If it's another buff, then we might be we might be good if it's another buff. But they are gonna have to block now. Okay. It is not a buff. We can give it go again, but we can't do anything afterwards. So that's a bit of a shame, but we're just gonna fire this off. Sleep dart for eleven with a premeditate. So they do have to block with armor. They have to block. They have to block with their armor and a card to survive, right? So if they block from, yeah. So they're blocking for three. So they're still lethal, still lethal right now. Eleven to six. There we go. So they have to block with two cards. Okay, they're blocking with all of their cards because of a rain raisers threatened, maybe. And then we can just sigil at the end of our turn, gain some life, and then arsenal this card, which is pretty good. And then we still have snappies available as well, which is also very good. 
Uh, we've taken away a lot of their armor. Um, their one card hand is probably not going to do much now that we've just sigiled either. So we can add this to our arsenal and pass. And then we can just knock potentially for the win here. Um, what have they got? Sonata Arcanics. Not much. It's all non-actions. All non-attack actions. So they have one, two block, potentially three. So if we just get a dominated eight, I think we probably win here. So do we go for the dominated eight or do we just go for stripping the cards from hand? I think we go for the dominated eight, don't we? I think we go for the dominated eight. We could go for we could go for searing shot and then dominated eight, couldn't we? Play searing shot, give it go again with snappies, then play knock, go and get the thing, reload the codex in, switcheroo, then play premeditate and then use this. Okay, maybe we do that. I think though, I think that's correct. I think that's correct. So we play this, snappies it, play knock, reload the sleep dart. Yeah, okay, fine. That's good. I think that's good. So this is lethal if it hits, basically. Just going to try and draw out the rest of that armor, which we do. So we give that go again. Ah, see, we could just load in the sleep dart, because we know there's a frailty on top. Or did we just put it to the bottom? I cannot remember what we did. So it's been given go again. Now we can just go get the dominated eight, right? Which is... Enough. If they block with a three cast, a three card, and and the tunic, I think we just go. I think we just go for the. Oh, I just don't know. Dominated eight is not enough. They'll go down to one, but then we can get remorseless, can't we? So I guess that also works. So yeah, let's just go knock, go get dominated remorseless. Because Remorseless kills them. Uh, actually, if we get... Si oh, we can't get Searing Shot. We can get Infecting Shot. That's what we can do. Yeah, now we can get Infecting Shot. Reload this. Activate Azalea. Give this Dominate and then fire it for 8. Because obviously Infecting Shot will be lethal at the end of their turn. So they will still have to block with everything and Pitch at the same time. So this could be enough. We could actually also put a Aim Counter on this. So we probably will do that as well. Which could also change things, because obviously pushing up to 6 is also, well, 9 because of Premeditate behind it is pretty good. Yes, we will pay for that. Pitching a Codex, and then we can play Premeditate, and then fire it for 9 dominated with a with a Blood Rot on hit. So effectively, effectively they can only block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from hand, and it's coming in for 9 with a Blood Rot, so I, I think they're dead next turn. Because they have to then they have to then keep a card back for pitching for blood rot. That's the issue that they're going to have now. So they're blocking for six. They're blocking for three. So they're they're, they're dead unless they block of their equipment. Or oh, they do have. Uh, okay, no, they've used their skull cap, so they can't. They can only block for one, and then they die. Yeah, they're dead. GGS. GGS, mate. Good game. Good game. Are they going to say good game back? What do we think? I've said good game. Are they going to say good game back? No. No, they're not. But there we go. Um, thank you very much for everybody who's tuned in today. I um, want to thank everybody who's got involved with the raffle, all the patrons as well. Your names are flashing up right now. Thank you very much for being so generous. And uh, to the sponsor of the channel, uh, up until the end of the year, that's Tobias at the Sigilic Games. Does some fantastic alters. Make sure you go and check them out and use the uh, affiliate code gag 4 alts to get 10% off and just bling out your decks. They're awesome stuff. Um, I'm going to have some uh, some new stuff to show you very, very soon with that as well. But yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, and we'll see you still all over again tomorrow here on Go Again Gaming. Cheers.